have entered into an active shooter situation, and the decisions you make in the following moments could mean the difference between life and death. Hi, my name is Trista, and through extensive research and experience myself being shot at, I will inform you about what it's like to be in an active shooter situation. I will inform you of the history and how to react before, during, and after an active shooter situation. A brief history according to CNN and the LA Times of active shooter situations includes the following. In 1949, Howard Unrock opened fire and killed 13. This was the first mass shooting in the US. In 1966, Charles Joseph Whitman at Texas University killed 18 and wounded 30 others. This was the first mass shooting at a school. In April 20th, 1990 was the infamous Columbine Rampage. Two students opened fire at their school on other students and faculty, killing 13 and wounding 24 others. According to Ralph W. Larkin in his book, Comprehending Columbine, what made Columbine distinguished from other shooting events was that it was premeditated up to months in advance. And the target of this shooting was the entire school, not just one or two individuals. On April 16, 2007, a Virginia Tech senior opened fire, killing 32 and wounding 17 others on his campus. This is one of the deadliest shootings up till this time. On November 5, 2009, a major in Fort Hood opened fire, killing 13 and wounding 32 others. It was surprising because it was one of the first terrorist attacks on U.S. soil with a gun. On July 20, 2012, at a movie premiere of Dark Knight in Aurora, Colorado, 12 were killed and 58 others were wounded. There were more casualties than the Virginia Tech shooting and it led largely to contributing to the gun control debate. On December 14, 2012, at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, 27 were killed and one was wounded. 20 of those killed were children. This is known as the deadliest school shooting to date. In his editorial, We the People Confront Sandy Hook, Jonah G. Semix address our nation's failure to address active shooting events. He said, and perhaps far from being transformative, a day that reshaped the national conscious, a day that created a national conscious and that led to simple common sense action, most of us have turned away as well. Finally and most recently, on December 2nd, 2015, two attackers opened fire on a holiday party in San Bernardino. 14 were killed and 21 others were wounded. This is considered to be one of the largest terrorist attacks in the U.S. since 9-11. Now that I've given you a history, I will tell you how to react before, during, and after an active shooter event. The key to being able to react to an active shooter event is recognizing one beforehand. You can do this using something called situational awareness, which is being aware and perceiving dangers around you. According to Cooper's Color Codes and Stratford's Practical Guide to Situational Awareness, there are five levels of consciousness. The first is white, which is tuned out. The second is yellow, which is relaxed awareness. The third is orange, which is ready for action. The fourth is red, which is action mode. And the fifth is black, or panic mode. Yellow is preferable for situational awareness because you are alert, however your heart rate is low. You are able to locate exits ahead of time and you set a baseline for the energy in a room. You are alert for any dangers that could happen. Using situational awareness, you can pick up on pains or pre-attack indicators. According to Campus Safety Magazine, pains can include a person minimizing door-to-door -door distance with their vehicle, low familiarity with an area, nervousness, mental discomfort, tunnel vision, repeated communication or prayers, muttering, difficulty with decision making, trouble with communication, and repeated entry and exit from a building. Once you've ID'd a potential danger, it is key for you to know your reaction ahead of time. Professor J. Pete Blair of Texas University said, it may take several minutes for the first deputy to arrive to an active shooter situation. It could possibly take up to half an hour if they're waiting for backup. The key to responding is being able to respond without the help of first responders. You can do this getting, by getting ahead in your decision-making cycle in a process called the OODA loop. Air Force pilot John Boyd came up with this cycle and used it to surprise his enemies in air warfare. The four letters in OODA loop stand for the four stages, 
The first which is observe, the second orient, the third is decide, and the fourth is act. Without a plan, you have to go through all four stages of the decision-making cycle, taking you longer. With a plan, you get to skip over stages in the decision-making process, meaning you have more time that can potentially save your life. Now that you know how to perceive a threat, it's time for you to react. According to Chris Grolinek, active shooter expert at LA County Sheriff's Department, there are three courses of action you can take during an active shooter event. The first is run. Since you have ID'd the exits ahead of time, head straight for them. Help yourself first and foremost, help others if you can, and then leave. Leave others if they're not willing to go with. Leave materials behind, do not move anyone who is injured. According to Brandon Webb, Navy SEAL and Sniper, in these active shooter situations, if you look historically, most of these shooters are not well experienced marksmen. For one, hitting a moving target is very hard. I'm a trained sniper and I think people don't realize you can run and take action and get out. Run for it, think self-rescue. The second thing you can do in an active shooter situation is hide. Get behind anything that can conceal you from bullets that can keep them from hitting you. Get some place the shooter can't see you, lock any doors you can, and if you can't lock doors, barricade them with heavy materials. Turn off all lights and devices and be as quiet as possible. The third and final response is to fight. This is a last resort. Make anything you can into weapons. Your goal should be to incapacitate and distract the shooter. Yell, make loud noises, get the help of others and work as a team. Catch the shooter off guard. After you have survived an active shooter situation, you need to know how to respond to first responders. According to the Interagency Security Commission, a part of the Department of Homeland Security, first responders have priorities. Their, prior, their primary priority is to respond to the threat, engage, and neutralize the active shooter as soon as possible. Everything else will happen after. They may shout and force you to the ground, and they will not stop to help you or anyone who is injured. After they have gone through and neutralized the threat, then medical help will arrive. According to George Mason University Police Chief Drew Tracy, EMS will enter the warm zone after first responders have come through and taken care of the threat. After you've made it out of the active shooter situation and you are clear, you can approach, you can approach first responders. The Department of Homeland Security suggests remaining calm and taking directions, putting down any items you have, keeping your hands open and in sight at all points in time, not making any sudden movements or touching first responders, not making any loud noises, and not going directly to EVAC to ask for help. In conclusion, today I have informed you of a brief history of active shooter situations, and I have told you what to do before, during, and after. Please remember that planning is key when it comes to active shooter situations, and the decisions you make can mean the difference between life and death. Thank you. Are there any questions?